Okay, this is this is between the four of us now. All right, this is between the four of us. We got to go. A little secret. Yeah, a little secret. Mm -hmm. We're expanding our operations, Ryan. I know you already know what this is, but you I haven't know, you haven't been here recently. I don't think to see where how much how many I've put in there. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> no. It's a lot. Okay. But if we if we're all working together, all right. If we're all working together, we can we can we can make this even even greater than it already is. So let's let's quickly let's quickly head over to Graffins. What's hilarious is I don't think he's noticed. <laughs> I don't think he's noticed. Oh wow! Somehow. Oh wow! Oh, just you wait, Ryan. Just, just you wait, buddy. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm already hungry. <laughs> so oh bad. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Most of Jesus these. Jesus Christ! I'm pretty sure, like, like two thirds of these are mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an all you eat can eat buffet. <laughs> um. So yeah, basically, oh, if you if you have any dogs to spare, please just bring them here. <laughs> well, they, there's about forty dogs here, according to this. Exactly. Screen. Damn. So yeah, I, you, do you know the dogs, every, so I don't know where they went. Yeah. Do you know every single one of these counts towards the passive mob cap? And do you know what the passive <laughs> mob cap is? Sixty. Or hundred. Fifteen. Oh, fi oh it's fifteen. <laughs> 15. Well, okay, so, but if but if these are if these are unloaded, if you just AFK if these, here, if these are unloaded, if, yeah, if you just AFK here, <laughs> this will just like prevent passive mob spawning across the entire server. <laughs> Epic prank, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, did you put crash slabs in his furnace? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah that I did. sounds like a box player. He did I that did. to me, the son of a bitch. And he crashed me like four times. In <laughs> fact, him doing that to me got me to install the fucking the, the crash slab action thing. The crash slab fix. Now, now I can't crash again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. If only Princess Diana had that. If I, if only. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, anyway, there's a there's a lot of dogs here. So, mine, you're in on this. Doc, you're in on this. If you have any spare dogs, just bring them here. Collect them over time and then just bring them here. It's going to be great. This is the dog spot. <laughs> <laughs> alright, that was a good prank on her. That was a fucking good one. Yeah, alright. Okay, let me grab all these dogs. Basically, all of them yeah, are mine. Oh so. my god. <laughs> Someone Actually, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. You. I want to see someone punch okay, you. Yeah, yeah, hang on. Doc, you've got nothing on you right now, right? Uh, technically, no. Oh, Perfect. No, no, no. Right. One of them's so, going to escape the plantation. Will they all stand watch. up if I punch you? Uh, no, punch him. Try it out. Punch him. Punch him. Ooh, ooh, punch him. Oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Look at them all! <laughs> Look how many are mine! <laughs> Jesus. Okay, sit. Sit. Oh my sit. God. The Sit. Sit. <laughs> There's so many. It's like it's like walking and just stepping into a beast. Oh my god! How did one get in the lava? How did he get in? How? How did he get in? He phased through the glass. Oh my god! Did one just burn to death? Oh yeah, one yeah. phased through the I wall. Don't know how what he even got fuck? in there? Sit. No idea how that Sit. happened. What the fuck? Sit. Touch the glass. Sit. Sit. Okay, are they all sitting or what? Come back. Sit. Sit. Okay, <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> There's so many of them. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, basically none Very of them. Cool. As you can see, basically none of them are uh, Greffins. So, yeah. Write that down. Has he not noticed? Has he really, not noticed? <laughs> he really has not noticed. He hasn't Does he said a word. He just come back and he's like, "Ha, huh, this is anyway." <laughs> I think he just thinks he's done it himself. I don't know because he had like five dogs. <laughs> but... Boy, my dog collection <laughs> sure is growing. Well, to be fair, I think he's over at his um pit. Yeah, he's working at the parkour thing. place more than he is here. So you should like um. <laughs> Once you fill it up with a lot of dogs, you see that more dogs, you should tell him, uh, have you checked the, the, my gift at your main house? <laughs> <laughs> I left a gift, and I'm just like hidden somewhere and scare him into Give punching him a, me. a van of 14 mm -hmm. Russian bozoids. <laughs> 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 Fucking stupid dogs. Anyway, Get the hell out of here. there's the dogs. If you have any spare dogs, write that down. Get in here. Mm -hmm. Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode here from the Back to Beta server, which as you can see, I've been getting up to a bit more uh, update suppression shenanigans with this nether portal here. This is a nether portal that is just one block wide and it's uh, floating in the air with no obsidian. And yeah, it does work. Let me go through and I'll show you. You can go all the way through 
and it'll put me about put me out in my normal uh normal little corner in the nether hub and then I can go back and it'll drop me uh drop me off so yeah it works <laughs> and it's uh it's pretty cool it is a little time consuming to make one of these but it's pretty uh it's pretty easy, um, but I thought I'd show it off because I uh, I showed a little uh, little teaser of this again in my uh, community page and on uh, on the uh, Golden Age subreddit, um, and yeah, people are asking how this is done, how is this possible? Um, so I'll show you how. Um, there's kind of a couple ways you can do this. You can make it too wide as well, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll run you through the uh, the kind of basics of how how to do this. Let me uh, let me set up a Nether portal right now. Uh, I'll just. I just won't fill in the corners because that'll save me a headache later. Uh, there we go. Okay, and then let me grab my oh my flint and seals here. Boom. Okay, so we've got another portal here. Very good. Now the way to set up a I'm actually just going to turn my sounds off so we don't have to listen to the Nether portal sounds as loud. Um, now the way to set up a uh, update suppression I guess machine I don't know. Um, is as follows so pretty much if we want to get rid of this block and keep it all the same um, I'll put a piece of pink wool right next to it place a uh, sticky piston there two sticky pistons leading into there um, now this is directional um, I think it's oops uh, I suppose looks like it's a negative negative I'm not really sure I'm not really sure exactly it is directional but um, basically to make sure it's it's you know working in the right direction this piston will push out before this one does um, although in this configuration I think because the obsidians there it might just work anyway um, so yeah you place two redstone torches there a redstone torch here then you break this one and that creates a uh, a piston with six faces there like that then the next thing you want to do is place uh, a block sort of diagonal to it, like that. Now, in this case, because the nether portal is right here, we don't want to place a block on top like this, but it's very common to. Um, you, so you just want to place one diagonal, and you don't want to place one here either, because you don't want to update this when you break that block later. Um, so yeah, you place a block there, and then any direction out. And I'm going to place a pressure plate on that block that's diagonal away. And I'm going to get my pickaxe and I'm going to start breaking and then step on the pressure plate like that. And then we're going to break the subsidian. Now I will get kicked from the game. Um, that is very, very normal. Um, I've only ever done this in survival, so I don't really know how safe it is in... Uh, sorry. I've only ever done this in on, on the server. I've never done this in my own single player world, so I don't really know how safe it is. So um, maybe, yeah, just be careful there. Anyways, uh... Don't look at the uh, the IP, by the way, and also don't look at my password. Okay, we're in. So now, as you can see, that uh, that piece is gone, and you can just break. Uh, you can just break all of this like that, and there you go. As you can see, that piece is gone. Anyways, uh, yeah. So basically, you can just kind of make your way around the portal, doing the same uh, tactic. So, I'm going to break this block here, set up the pressure plate, and yeah, the problem with the, the nether portals is it just takes a long time. <laughs> uh, it just takes a long time to break the, uh, the obsidian, but that's just standard procedures, I guess. Log back in, and yeah, there you go, you can see it's gone. Now, something I found with breaking nether portals is uh, and leaving the two wide is that um, if you go in like a, a circle fashion like this, breaking them, once you get to this line, uh, like say you've broken all of this obsidian, once you get to this line, once you break one of these, it'll get rid of the portal. So I'm just going to test now. I'm pretty sure if I break uh, like a block here and a block here, it'll, uh, it'll be fine. Uh, something else cool about these is you can actually uh, push them as well and they'll still work without an issue. So that's cool. You don't have to continuously remake them or anything like that. So I'm also going to break this one here. Um, so pretty much just going to break one on each on each side, uh, just to just to make it so that I, I'm pretty sure it won't update uh, the like the the portal um, if you do it this way. Uh, let me just check because I I haven't actually tried. Okay, interesting. 
Okay, so as far as I found, I, I guess you can't actually have a two wide. I, I, I suppose that's my bad for saying that. I, uh, I was almost certain you could, but uh, yeah, you can definitely get the one wide. Let me show you how you can get that. Now, the way to get the one wide is to have the uh, glitch piston block uh, touching the, uh, the nether portal like that. So if we go there, and then we go, hang on, uh, like that. That there. All right, and then if we break any of the nether, uh, any of the obsidian around here, so let's just break this one. There you go. It'll leave one, uh, one portal frame there, just like that, and uh, it works. Now there's pro. Now, like I was saying with the the two wide, the reason I thought the two wide would work is because this one um, will sometimes break if you uh, break the obsidian kind of in the wrong order. So I'd recommend breaking sort of these blocks first. Sorry, I'd recommend getting rid of these blocks first. You know, these ones don't do anything anymore, and then get rid of these three, and then the top and the bottom ones um, after that, and you'll be left with this one here. That's what I did, and you'll be left with this one here. Now, I thought the... I'm sure there is a way to actually get the two-wide portal done, but I haven't actually had enough time to really play fully around with it. I've just been testing out um, briefly in this area. But, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how you do it. It's pretty simple. I recommend you play with it yourself, because uh, it's not too difficult, and yeah, I think, you know, I'm sure you, other people will be able to come up with much better um, better ways than me. Um, I will say, actually, like, this is how I got those um, glitch doors as well. Um, and again, this is all credit to Deadly Dirt Block for showing everyone this the guy's a madman. Uh, let me grab this door. And you can do you can do all sorts of this. I've seen people playing around with it. You can get floating, floating blocks, you can get... Um, you know, floating repeaters and all sorts. Um, yeah, here he is. Speaking, speak of the devil. Speak of the devil. What's he thinking? What's he? What's he crafting in his brain? Tempor. Templace. Okay, fun little visit there. So basically, it's the same process again. Uh, I think. Well, what direction would I have to be in? Probably this way is correct. Is that correct? It is. Okay. And then break that. Uh, that's going to be too low. Uh, that's okay. We can just piston it up. Alright, let's place the door down and then put that there. Put that there. Alright, and break the door. There we go. And then now you've got a half door, just like that. And this works with iron doors and things like that. Um, yeah, you just, you mainly just can't update them. If you up, you can update this one with an open and close, you can't with a, with an iron door. Uh, yeah, like I said, I recommend playing around with it. There's a lot of cool things you can do. You can put, like, floating rails, and, um, I'm pretty sure you can put, for example, like, on this, uh, nether pool here, you can put, probably put blocks around it that aren't supposed to be there. I don't know. I don't know the full extent to this. I haven't actually played, uh, yeah, like I said, I haven't spent enough time playing around with this to know what the, uh, what the limits are, but, um, yeah, I want to, yeah, I think if, if everyone knows about it, we'll get to see some really cool creations, um, with this stuff, so, yeah. Also, I'd like to point out that this portal placement is temporary. The only reason I left it here is because um, our one-year anniversary of the server is coming up, and this portal is a bit of a frame of reference um, to a screenshot I have from before this place was developed at all. So, um, yeah, eventually the portal is going to be over there, and I think I will do this one wide thing again. But, uh, yeah, that's why it's there. Anyways, in the meantime as well, I've been clearing out these spaces here in preparation for um, the next two farms that are going in. So this is going to be the wheat farm, and then this is going to be the mushroom farm. And I'm not sure, but I think I, I, I plan on trying to get both of these done um, in this episode. I don't know how much of the process I'll show. I might just, uh, I might just build them honestly and then show you um, what I've come up with and the little gimmicks we have um, underneath. That's the... That's the idea, and I think I'm going to start with this wheat farm, and then last of all do the mushroom farm. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get into that, and I'll show you when it's done. The heck is this? <laughs> is this a secret way up to the top of my base? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. This is actually kind of funny. You can kind of come down here, place that back, and then you kind of come up here. This is how Ryan and Doc keep getting to the roof of my house. 
to add things. This is hilarious. Look at this. So there's like a little, 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 little exit point here. <laughs> Problem is, there's no real way to get up to here. So there's always like dirt blocks like this. That's funny. This is what the top looks like, by the way. If you haven't been up here for a while, <laughs> this is what it looks like. It's a good view from up here, I will say. I always, I, I like this. I like this. I want to do something inside it, maybe, but I don't know. For now, it's uh, it's just exposed. I want to see. I haven't seen what it looks like while the uh, the stadiums been built from up here. Holy crap! That looks cool. Hell yeah. Nice. Okay, and a bit of time later, we have some wheat farms in place, and I'm really happy with how these have turned out. These look really good. Um, continuing the the kind of unique style of each farm, um, I think these ones stand th these ones stand out pretty well on their own. Uh, we've got okay, we've got some some pretty cool things going on here with these farms. Um, so. Firstly, design elements. We've got some hanging piston heads here, which are nice. I do like these lights, and I like that there's only trapdoors on sort of two sides rather than all four. I think that looks looks cool and interesting. We've got uh, an update suppressed door here, so that it's kind of like a little gate in and out, because obviously you need to uh, manually replant the, uh, the wheat. And then, as you can see, if you can see the hitbox, we've got quite a lot of... Um, Invisible stairs. So invisible stairs are really cool. They they have a lot of cool kind of properties. Um, items can fall through them, um, but water can't go through them. Uh, so basically, uh, we've got water that will come out of these walls, which I'll show you in a minute. And uh, when it sort of pulls across here, it, it breaks all the all the wheat, and it all gets pushed into um, this water stream down here, which gets pushed along. Um, but the water actually stops on these blocks, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, pretty cool little farm design here, and I've fallen. Oh, that's gonna break the door. Damn it! Okay, I'll fix, I'll fix that later. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, note to self, don't fall down there. I need to, uh, I need to actually make, like, a, another way up there. Put some more stairs there. Whoops. That's fine. Um, easy fix. Uh, and yeah, both of these are exactly the same, and after the items fall into the water streams there, they get pushed along. And they get pushed down either side here. Um, now flicking this lever will turn on the farm. And both of these do the same thing. It's not like one does one side, one does the other. Both of them will flick, uh, will activate both farms. And then it just becomes a waterfall of, uh, of items. So I'm going to actually demonstrate that right now. So if I flick this lever, you can hear it go. And you can hear all the water go. We do have some losses, but whatever. It's the way it do be sometimes worth it and then all the items get pushed down there and as you can see all the water gets stuck on that and then when you come down here we've got a nice little waterfall of items which I think is kind of funny <laughs> I always like the little waterfalls of items a lot of them do get pushed into the middle but that's okay and then uh, and then yeah you get a nice little collection uh, we'll turn this off nice little collection of, of wheat and seeds so a full harvest is about three and a bit stacks which is uh, which is quite that's alright, that's not bad. Not bad for a small farm. And, uh, yeah. And then, obviously, you'd come up, open the door that's supposed to be here, and you would, uh, and you would fix this up. Now, there are some losses down on this side. Maybe I should, uh, maybe we should have a little water stream here just to fix that up. I don't know. Now, I couldn't really, I was wondering what I should do for a gimmick down in this area, because obviously down here we've got the, uh, the cactus sort of spinning into there. Over here we've got it so that the sugar cane gets delivered to you. Now, I sort of thought, hey, wheat kind of looks like popcorn, kind of, maybe, if you, like, really squint and use your imagination, um, and it comes from seeds, so I thought, wouldn't it be funny is, is if we had uh, popcorn, sorry, popcorn, wheat stored in dispensers here, and when you stand on a pressure plate, it all just pops out of the ground, <laughs> and it kind of looks like popcorn, I don't know. And then, yeah, you just kind of get a whole bunch of wheat dispensed out of these dispensers. And all of these, all of these work. And they're all on the same kind of timer. And then you can walk around and you can grab your, uh, grab your wheat. Now, I feel like this would be used for me, uh, because I always, I'm always collecting wheat, you know, to, to kind of make bread and stuff. But yeah, as you can see, I've got, I've got a lot of wheat now. Um, I always using, like, 
always going to my double chest to grab wheat and like, I don't know, re recollect it and stuff. So I feel like it would be a lot more fun if I were to just like walk over this once and have all of this pop up <laughs> and then I collect like, you know, plenty of wheat uh, for, uh, for, I don't know, for whatever I need it for. I think that would just be pretty funny. Okay, so I've actually gone in and I've added a few more little adjustments here. I've added some water streams there and here, um, and then like a staircase just in case I ever fall into this space. I can get out without uh, without breaking this this glitch door. Um, and I've used a few more of those uh, invisible stairs to kind of stop the water from flowing. If you don't know how to make invisible stairs, it's pretty much the same way you make crash labs actually. Um, where you would, I've chosen the worst place to put this because I can't put a redstone on the ground. If I put a sticky piston here, a regular block here, two redstone dust, and then a um, cobblestone stair there, once you power it, as you can see, it turns into an invisible stair like this. And you can walk through this, you can place signs on it and things, um, you can throw items through it, and then water gets stuck on it. It's, it's a very useful and very cool block. It can be used in mob farms, it's, it's a really cool block, so yeah, very simple to make. But, I think that is going to be all for today's episode. Unfortunately, didn't get enough time to, uh, to build up the mushroom farm, but I hope you guys still enjoy um, this wheat farm that we managed to build in the meantime. And also, uh, this, this glitch nether portal <laughs> uh, was very interesting as well. I hope you guys think this is kind of funky and interesting. Alright, but just quickly, I do have one more thing to talk about. Um, if you can believe it, this server, the back to beta server, is just about one year old. We are just shy of our one year anniversary of starting this server, which is kind of crazy to think about. I feel like this year has gone both very fast and, and very short at the same time. Um, I think it's the 29th of April is our one year anniversary, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna celebrate by actually doing a live stream um, of the server, doing a full world tour of the server, seeing everything there is to see as much as I can. Um, hopefully we're gonna have plenty of the members on to, uh, you know, give their own detailed explanations of their own bases and builds, and um, maybe we can share some memories and things like that. So uh, yeah, also, yeah, 29th of the 4th. That was the uh, that was the starting date. The live stream is going to be um, around 4 p.m. on Saturday the 13th, um, American EST. So yeah, that's like American time. Uh, 6 a.m. Sunday the 14th. Um, that'll be Australian time or 9 p.m. BST, which is the UK time on Saturday the 13th. So those are your your uh, your time references to kind of base your own time zones off. Um, and yeah, that, that's when the live stream will start, and it'll probably go for quite a while. But uh, yeah, if you're watching this video when it comes out, you know, you'll be able to hopefully uh, hopefully catch that live stream. But if you're watching this video after the fact, the VOD will be up on my channel in the, the live streams tab, and uh, I'll try and link it in the, descri the description of this video as well. And um, I also plan on condensing the VOD as well. Um, down the line as well so yeah should have plenty of ways to watch the uh the live stream if you happen to miss it but yeah thank you guys for watching hope to see you at the live stream and i will catch you guys in the next one laters